the rarest PlayStation 2 games. What up, friends? My name is Stan from Random Tens, and for my money, the PlayStation 2 might just be the greatest home console ever produced. With its unparalleled popularity and library of games in the high 3000s, it's no wonder why this 6th generation system was in production for over 13 years and sold more than 1.5 billion software titles during its lifespan. So yeah, this is the best selling console ever made, and based on industry trends, it'll likely hold that distinction for the rest of time. But behind all of its incredible numbers and accolades, there's one thing us collectors want to know. Does the PS2 have any odd rarities and collectibles worth crazy amounts today? And is it possible that you own one of these games without even knowing it? Well, the answers to both of those questions will be revealed in this much requested episode of The Rarest. But for now, let's get into the games. With a library of games as deep as the PS2's, there's no denying that quite a few eventually became pretty collectible as time went on. From fan favorites like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and the beloved Eco, to cult classics such as Rule of Rose and Wild Arms Alter Code, there are some really great titles that would put a smile on any collector's face. However, because of its popularity, many of these games would find themselves ported or re-released on future Sony systems, diminishing their collectability. However, a little game called Dot Hack Part 4 Quarantine doesn't have this problem. Of course, the multimedia franchise that is the Dot .hack series is the furthest thing from little, but despite its popularity among both video game and anime fans alike, this particular sequel just never sold well on the PS2, at least in North America, and is now considered pretty difficult to track down. Released in the West in January 2004, this action RPG title continues to rise in terms of both demand and price, and now sells for a respectable 115 US dollars complete in box, making it one of the priciest standard North American PS2 games games in existence. Of course, being the fourth entry in a franchise only a year old is likely a key factor in why this particular game was produced in such small numbers, but if you do find yourself infected with the collector's bug, this one isn't a bad place to start. Did you know that with sales upwards of 25 million units, the PlayStation 2 is the best-selling home console ever released in Japan? This impressive figure means that nearly one in every five people at the time owned some version of this monster system, and of course with numbers like those it makes sense that there are dozens of collectible import games. And today on this showcase we'll be focusing on a few, with the first being the cave developed Ibarra. This scrolling shooter began as an arcade game, but was eventually ported to the PS2 exclusively in Japan in 2006, and with little plot and some lackluster reviews, it didn't go on to sell a ton of copies. Despite fluctuating a bit these days, on average Ibarra still sells for around 170 US dollars complete in box, but if you're lucky enough to find one on eBay, can be had for cheaper. Either way, this is the most collectible title when it comes to standard shoot-em-ups on the PS2. However, when it comes to import games as a whole, there's still a few that are considered even harder to find. When it comes to iconic PlayStation characters, a select few immediately come to mind. Kratos from God of War, the adorable Sackboy, and of course almost every single protagonist either Naughty Dog or Insomniac has created over their illustrious careers. However, next to Crash Bandicoot, the one mascot I think of most has gotta be Solid Snake. At this point, it's hard to imagine that a series as popular as that of Metal Gear could have any hard-to-find collectibles, especially during the PS2 era, but you'd be mistaken. The red-covered Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence Limited Edition features the cutscene film Existence and was only made available to North Americans who pre-ordered all the way back in 2006. Surprisingly enough, this extremely scarce title consistently fluctuates in price, and can likely be yours for around $70 US complete in box if you find the right auction. However, even more desired among diehard MSG3 fans is the Japanese exclusive Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater Premium Package, which includes everything from its own collectible DVD to a special model of Shagohot. Today this 2004 package goes for around 150 US complete with everything, but it'll cost you nearly double that for a sealed copy. So if you love collecting games and have a soft spot for the man who makes the impossible possible, you may want to add these titles to your library. Although I still have one question remaining. How many versions of this game are there? Oh 
Speaking of multiple versions of games, the iconic Street Fighter franchise is home to some of the most satisfying and beloved fighting experiences ever created. And with so many different variants of the same few games, it's no surprise that at least one of these special versions would go on to become quite rare. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Limited Edition was released exclusively in Japan in 2004 on the PlayStation 2, and came bundled with everything from a bonus DVD to a 300-piece jigsaw puzzle. Considered a misstep by some, this experimental title is actually a favorite among many fans of the genre, and as such, this collector's edition now sells for anywhere between two to three hundred dollars US, depending on the auction and condition. Of course, if you love this game and don't want to shell out hundreds of dollars, the regular edition still sells for very cheap as long as it's not still sealed. But if you're a lifelong fan of the series and want to add something special to your collection, then you can't go wrong with this Capcom collectible. If you've been following this episode closely, it won't surprise you to learn that the final entry in this showcase is an obscure Japanese import title. In fact, this game is so hard to find that it actually has two versions among the console's rarest. Of course, I'm talking about the one and only Mushihime-sama. What's that? You've never heard of it? Well, this manic shooter started off as an arcade game before being ported to the Xbox 360, iOS devices, and of course the PlayStation 2, where it had a pretty weird release. The standard edition was put out with little attention and now sells for around $60 US. However, it's the limited box version of the arcade port that cements this as a true collector's item. As you can imagine, this limited edition version of an already obscure game makes for some very low sales, and as such, this 2005 title now sells for anywhere between one to 200 US dollars complete in box. However, with so few sales of this collector's box taking place, it's hard to gauge an exact number. Of course, this figure is much lower than others on this showcase, and the truth is because there are so many imports here and with no actual numbered editions to go off of, it's tricky to tell which of the final three entries is technically more collectible. But from the research I did and the numbers I tracked, it seems to me at least that the Mushihime-sama limited box is the rarest PlayStation 2 game ever made. Well, there you have it. I know this episode wasn't as epic as usual, but as I mentioned, Japanese import games are really hard to gauge sometimes, and with the PS2 just ceasing production in 2013, I feel like it's just a matter of time before even rarer games bubble up to the surface. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Random10s for news and updates if you'd like. And as I always say, happy hunting, baby rhinos, and peace.